Anita here from Benita Doodles and I'm going to show you how to stitch the scans together that we did. Um, I'm using Photoshop uh, but you can get a free version which I believe is CS2 uh, Photoshop. Uh, if you just google free Photoshop um, add download in you should be able to get one. Um, I'm not sure whether you can still get it from the Adobe website. GIMP is another alternative which is a free version very similar to how Photoshop works. So once you get into the swing of things you'll be absolutely fine. Uh, you can also get um, pick stitch apps for your phone. Um, I'm aware that we need to be doing this on the computer but there are versions of doing this on the computer as well but my recommendations are either the free version of Photoshop or GIMP so I've got both of my scans open and in my Photoshop they go on to one uh, sort of file selection so we need to separate them to make it easier to work from one is the right way one's the wrong way so we're just going to flip that 180 and essentially what we need to do is make them an A3 file. So we're going to go to canvas size and this alters the size of your canvas. We want a white background so you need to make sure that the canvas colour is still white. If you wanted no background you'd untick that. So we're just essentially at the moment going to be doubling the size, just enough room to get the other side of the tiger over onto that file image and you can do that on Photoshop by simply dragging and dropping over the top. So we're going to move the others out of the way and we're going to extend our window so we can see exactly what we're doing. So you can see you can move that layer around and you'll find that they are on two separate layers so you need to make sure you're selecting the layer you need to work on and we need to change the transparency enough for you to see through but you also need it enough that when you layer over when you get it in the correct position it will, it will look right you will see as soon as it happens that it looks right because there's no um, sort of 3D effect happening underneath it so we just need to change that opacity back up to full. We then need your eraser tool and you need to go on to the hardness and when we are doing the stitching side of things we need to have it on quite a fluffy outer edge. Uh, if you did it on hard you would get almost like a ruler look so you need quite a fluffy edge on there. Um, use your straight bracket button on your keyboard and you can up and down the size of the brush so we're just going to clear that out and already you can see that it now looks like one image so we then want to crop it so we've got a better idea of what we've got left to clean if you crop it to size first then it means that you've got less work later on so unfortunately it's not in view but if you go up to your crop tool you can change in Photoshop you can change the size of the crop tool so I know that I want this to be A3 so I've changed the size to A3 so when I use my crop tool I cannot distort the size so I can guarantee then it's going to be A3 so you just got to get it in place like on here on the left hand side we want to make sure we don't chop his whiskers off so we just get that as close as possible we're just nudging it along at the moment until it's where I want it to be. So you can be really, really precise with it. And then you double click and that will apply the crop for you. Depending on the size, it can take a little while. So there it is, all stitched together. So I just want to make it a little bit longer And a little bit higher so now you can see exactly where that scan was and where we've got the clean image background now we've got something we want to match so I've got onto levels and I'm just tweaking the levels to bring the shadow down it doesn't need to be any work done on the highlights it's just bringing that shadow up 
um, shadow down, sorry, so the contrast is a little bit higher. Uh, so we're making sort of the blacks more blacker. Um, so again, just make sure that you are clicking on the right layers. What I've done there is I've now blended the layer to make it a single one and in Photoshop you highlight both the layers and if you're working on uh, Windows it's Control E, if you're working on a Mac it's Command E. So we've now gone on to replace colour and you can click on the background colour and you want to change the fuzziness to ensure that because he's got white in his beard and his eyebrows we don't want to be affecting that area, we only want to be affecting the background and all we're trying to do is make less work for ourselves in a quicker way. So you can do that two or three times, it doesn't matter. Um, but what you need to ensure is, like for example here, you can see parts of his beard shining through. Because we don't want any of that affected, uh, on this occasion I'm going to choose not to do any replacing colour because you can see that it just starts to affect the whole image. So instead we are going to go onto the paint tool. So make sure paintbrush is selected, make sure you've got white up, again bring your brush size to the size that you want and we don't want it too soft. If you have it too soft you'll get a fuzzy edging on the images but we just want to keep tidying up until we're happy with the results. I went over the whiskers a bit too much there so I've just undone that and gone on again. If you want to you can choose to do this on its own layer um, unless you have Photoshop history up it can be a bit difficult to undo after a certain amount I'm just going to keep cleaning up where we want it to be clean. Oh, I want a clean edge across the top and bottom, so I'm just using the select tool, getting the edge in there, and then I'm using the paintbrush. Swipe along and get that nice clean edge. So we're going to do that on the top, and I shall be doing it on the bottom as well. But it's worth just zooming in and out on here just to ensure that you're not deleting anything you shouldn't be or you're not painting over anything you shouldn't be. So already we're looking a lot cleaner but it's still not clean enough. When you go into your levels bring your shadow right up high and you can see on the left hand side by the whiskers, zoom in for you, that it's still quite dirty and where the indentation sits on the paper you can actually see the shadowing underneath the whiskers. So all we need to do is come up right close to your subject. This can take a little bit of time but it is really really worth it. All my pictures go through this process. So you can either do it three ways. The awkward way that people seem to do is the smudge tool. Personally I wouldn't do it, that would be my one avoidance. The other one is the dodge tool. Dodge tool lightens, burn tool darkens. So you can go around and you can dodge. So you can see that I'm going to lighten the whisker shadow there. Because we don't want that too high. So we've literally got to just go through and repeat the process until we're absolutely happy with where we are on our image. It didn't take me too long to do the tiger. I think... Um, probably 20 minutes if that all together but you just keep going I'm not finished yet but I'm just showing you for the purposes of this tutorial get your levels exactly where you want make sure you're happy with everything um, I would advise keeping two versions a TIFF version because JPEG compresses information which means it has a loss of quality PNG isn't so bad, you can do a PNG if you want to, um, but the best option <clears throat> is to have a JPEG and a TIFF version. Um, you can also PDF, but it's not really worth it. Uh, once you go too high anyway, the printers can't accept this, as I've got a phone call from mine this morning saying I'd crashed their systems. So just save as, go to where you want to save it, I have one as a TIFF and I have one as a JPEG and they are the best options for you.
you can check the image sizes you can see that the resolution is 600 we need to reduce that down to 300 and you'll see then that will reduce the size of the canvas it all keeps it in perspective um, but again if you keep it too high it will, you'll just crash the printers so um, that is essentially it if you've got any questions let me know